the Supreme Court unanimously deciding today that Colorado must allow Donald Trump to be on the presidential ballot, but there was some disagreement on how far that ruling should stretch. Five of the conservative justices wrote that no state can ever remove any federal officer from a ballot. The three liberal-leaning justices disagreeing wrote, quote, the majority announces that a disqualification for insurrection can occur only when Congress enacts a particular kind of legislation pursuant to Section 5 of the 14th Amendment. In doing so, the majority shuts the door on other potential means of federal enforcement. The majority attempts to insulate all alleged insurrectionists from future challenges to their holding federal office. That is very legalese, but it is a tough thing to accuse the majority of doing, insulating and protecting insurrectionists. Joining us now, retired conservative federal judge J. Michael Ludig. Uh, judge Ludig, you, you predicted that the Supreme Court would affirm Colorado's decision to remove Trump from the ballot, calling Colorado's decision unassailable in every single respect under the Constitution, unquote. I guess the justices didn't see it your way. What's your reaction? Uh, today's uh, ruling, uh, Jake, was uh, both uh, astonishing and unprecedented, not for its decision of the exceedingly narrow question presented by the case, though that c issue was important, but rather for its decision to reach and decide a myriad of the other constitutional issues uh, surrounding disqualification under 14th Amendment. In reaching and deciding those questions unnecessarily, the court, the majority, as the concurrences said, effectively decided that the former president will never be disqualified from holding the presidency in 2024 or ever, for that matter. But even more importantly, as the concurrence said, effectively the court today decided that no person in the future will ever be disqualified under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, uh, regardless whether he or she has engaged in an insurrection or rebellion against the Constitution of the United States. Yeah, it's pretty stunning. Uh, the concurrence is, it, it's stunning in its uh, overreach. It's, uh, it's a textbook example, Jake, of the kind of judi activist judicial opinion from the 1960s and the Warren Court era that begat the conservative legal and judicial movement in the 1970s and 1980s. But of course, it's different here because this is unmistakably a conservative court, most of whose members were uh, leaders of that conservative movement, at least in the 1980s yeah. forward. Judge Ludig, what do you say to a young person watching this who says, the fix was in. These are conservatives protecting Donald Trump. And, and according to the three liberal justices, they acted in such a way today to protect all insurrectionists. Uh, when there was an impeachment against Donald Trump for the insurrection, a lot of Republicans said, no, 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 that's not for Congress, that's for the courts. The Colorado Supreme Court tried to act on that, and the U.S. Supreme Court said, no, 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 this is for Congress. I mean, there are a lot of Americans out there who are skeptical of the court I don't know that this is going to help. The, the best answer I would give to those, those young people, Jake, is this. Uh, the, the concurrence said what I just said that they said. And Justice Amy Coney Barrett, who did not join the, the other five in the overreaching decisions that it made, accuse the three concurrences of stridency in their opinions. For your reader, for your listeners and your viewers, there was not one word of stridency in the concurring opinion by Justices Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson. Yeah. Not one single word of stridency. Judge J. Michael Ludick, always good to have you on. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.